Javi, obviously a, a battle out there uh, from start to finish. Uh, guy wouldn't go away. How, how are, I guess physically, how are you feeling right now, and, and how do you feel about your performance tonight? Yeah, it feels good, man. It was hard for me to take uh, that fight on short notice. Uh, he's uh, he was a totally different uh, different guy that I was training for. Fiziev's a shorter guy, uh, Muay Thai fighter. Uh, all of a sudden comes, uh, you know, Moicano, taller link, good jab, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Was was kind of hard to make that adjustment, but I'm pretty happy I got it done. Was there any consideration of, of not taking it because of all those things you just mentioned? Zero, zero. I told Dan, I told Sean Shelby, I'll fight anybody. Nice. Uh, the insistence on keeping it five rounds, um, we were a little bit surprised, obviously. Was, was that something that you wanted, or was that something the UFC said? Like, why keep it at five rounds? Uh, I was training for five rounds. So uh, I was training for a main event. Everybody knows that. When you do a fight camp for five rounds, it's pretty hard. So I don't want to take that, that away. I, I know I fight well when it goes, it goes distance. I feel good. And it was good, too, you know, to, to get, get rid of that ring rust that I had. You know, 16 months layoff. Uh, I felt that a little bit, but I think now I'm going to track. Nice. Uh, obviously, you damaged him quite a bit in there. That eye was pretty nasty. I guess what's going through your head is you're seeing how much damage he's taking. He's not going away. And... You know, arguably had his best round in the fifth round. Yeah, um, I think when you when you take fights on short notice, you don't you don't have much to prove, right? Like, like he said, I was uh, you know it's time to make money. I was in the pool sitting with my family. I got a call, so he jumped on the airplane, and okay, whatever happened happens, right? And I was training. I was on a fight camp for eight weeks. Fight got postponed. Brought new coaches from Brazil, new sparring partners. What's crazy for me, the last two weeks, a lot of stress, a lot of, a lot of things going on. Sold my place in California, moving back to Brazil. A lot, a lot of pressure, but you know, um, thank you God everything went well. This may be a silly question, because it's a fight, but when you see how much damage is around his right eye, is there any part of you that's like, I can't keep hitting him there, like this is terrible? Um, I thought, man, I really wanted you know, the doctor to stop it. But they did it. But you know, uh, I gotta do what I gotta do. Unfortunately, and I was, you know, I, you know, I was trying to finish the fight. But the guy's tough as nail. Yeah. Uh, you didn't get the Masvidal win tonight for that. So I guess are there are there other names? Maybe is, is Islam still a fight that makes sense? What's what makes sense for you now? Looks like Islam gonna fight Ben Yudaryush, right? And uh, he had a, a chance to fight me tonight. He didn't. Uh, and 170 pounds. I took that fight. They don't. And uh, I don't know. Looks like Connor's coming back on the summer. That could be a good one. Uh, title fight already scheduled. We'll see, man. You know, a lot of things can happen. Uh, I just want to be active. I want to be training. I need good names. So, man, I've been, I've been on this game for so many years. Fought everybody in two divisions. Uh, I need names that uh, make me, you know, want to go to the gym and train hard for it. You know, that's what I want. Rafael, straightforward. Uh, I was wondering, you know, obviously people talk about how many guys you have faced. You have one of the most difficult schedules, just all the opponents that you've taken on in the last several years. For you, just what keeps you to keep training at that high level and keep up this schedule at this stage of your career? Uh, man, uh, you know, I think I have a heart of a fighter, you know. I like, I, that, that's what I do for a living. I never did anything different pretty much of my whole life. And then I don't, you know, I don't, I don't you know, pick fights. You know, UFC call me with that opponent I, and I take fights and... Uh, and be on, on, on this level of competition that I, that I am, uh, I can't really, you know, pick fights, and uh, I never did. What are some of the things you're most proud of? Like, has it been, you know, some of the tougher opponents that you faced at 170? Was it just, you know, wh what are some of those fights that really stand out to you that you're very proud of personally? Uh, man, you know, my, my run for the title, you know, at lightweight, uh, I had a successful run. Uh, beat Anthony Pettis on his prime, 
and uh, move up. A lot of people took me for granted when I moved up, saying that I was too small, and I, I had a, a great run. Not going to say that was the best run because I lost on the title fight, but I beat Safedin, New Magni, and Robbie Lawler and fought for the title. So it's, uh, I'm proud of it, you know. I fought short for Kobe on that fight, but was, you know, was, you know, a closer one. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Rafael, just one question over here. Are you interested at all in fighting the winner of Chandler versus Ferguson? Uh, you know, uh, it's too soon to think about it. Uh, it's too soon. I, I did not even know that they were scheduled to fight. But, yeah, it's too soon to think about it. I think uh, I got a 60-day suspension. I think uh, the corner fight would make more sense to me right now. Great, thanks. Rafael over here, other side. Uh, you're, you're the 10th fighter in UFC history to hit the 20 wins mark all in the UFC. So can you speak a little bit on that record and if, if you were aware of that and what that record would mean to you? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't was aware of it. But, yeah, it, it feels great. I've been, I think I've been in UFC for... 14, 15 years, and it's been, you know, it's been great to me. Pretty happy with uh, with the company and the treatment that I get. Um, you know, I still have a lot on me. Still have a lot on me. Move back to Brazil, training with Novo Neon, with Andre Pederneiras, legendary coach, and uh, I think he's getting the best of me. I think in your next fight, you're going to pass Frankie Edgar for the most octagon time in the UFC, too. So what would that, like, outside of the wins, but just most time in general in the history of the UFC fighting, what would that record mean to you? Yeah, man, you know, being ahead of Frankie, Frankie's a legend, uh, that would be great, you know, like, that's, that's a lot of hours on the octagon. Proud of it. If I out just in front here. Um, you said that obviously you want the, you think the Conor fight makes sense next. Is it a case of, you know, obviously it's a big payday, but the fact that it's been, what, like six years since your cancelled fight and it's always been a fight you wanted since then? It's not, uh, I think the moment that we're living right now, it's, uh, that, that, that fight will make a lot of sense. You know, I was on a 16 months layoff, uh, Conor broke his leg and uh, he's coming back on the summer, I think. That could make that would, that would make sense. The division is kind of crazy right now, and I think that fight will make a lot of sense. But obviously, you know, you just picked up a win, but Connor's not had a win in two years. How would you assess when you were first booked to fight him? You know, right now, fight with a fight now, he's in a very different position from when you were first booked to fight him, is he not? Can you say it again, please? You know, when you were first booked to fight Connor. He was, you know, at the top of his game, and now he's at the bottom of his game. Is that something that puts you off the fight, or do you still want it? Yeah, the, the man, Kono is a, is a big name. Uh, it's always a, a lot of pay-per-view. He sells a lot of pay-per-view. That will be a big money fight, of course. And uh, we have kind of, we have a history too, you know. Like, like I said, I, I'm looking for names that, that make me uh, want to go to the gym and training. Being so many years on this game, uh, I don't want to fight, you know, like names that don't interest me, like don't, don't push me to go to the gym. I'm 37 years old, fought pretty much everybody on the division, in two divisions. So uh, I think he would be the guy that would motivate me to go to the gym and work, work hard for it. Is he the only name that stands right now, stands out? That's what I'm coming to my mind right now. Thank you. Rafael, tudo bom? Fazer em português aqui rapidinho, tá? Rafael, a primeira pergunta que eu queria fazer para você é sobre a luta em si. Uh, teve alguma surpresa na performance do Moicano? Teve alguma coisa que te surpreendeu nele em específico, no octógono? Ah, cara, eu, eu acho que a, 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 a durabilidade dele ali, né, de, de, de bancar ali por, por, por ter aceitado o tanto, tanto pouco tempo, de aguentar os cinco rounds bem, eu, eu impus meu jogo, estava bem treinado, mas... Terceiro ali, eu achei que ia finalizar ele, nocautear, mas o moleque segurou a onda legal e eu acho que isso me impressionou. Ali na arena, pareceu que no final do, do combate ele foi melhor do que durante a luta. Você sentiu de repente você estava mais cansado ou estava mais cadenciado pela certeza da vitória? Não, eu acho que o, o, o Dedé falou comigo para eu 
dá uma, uma para parar de caçar e dar uma andada e deixar ele vir mais para cima de mim. Mas isso é uma coisa que eu tenho que trabalhar em mim. Toda vez que eu estou andando, circulando o ringue, eu acho que eu estou perdendo a luta. Então, eu, eu sempre quero ir para frente. Então, eu acho que isso é uma coisa que eu tenho que trabalhar em mim. Nem sempre, quando você está andando, circulando, você está perdendo a luta, você está angulando. Então, eu, isso é uma coisa que... Aí eu acabei que botei em risco ali um round é, 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 sem necessidade. Entendeu? Aí tomei um jab ali dentro do olho, cara. Tomei um soco bem... Não foi tão forte, mas foi bem dentro do olho. Então, me, me machucou um pouco. Aí eu tomei uns golpes ali, mas nada, nada demais. Mas eu acho que foi o melhor momento dele na luta ali, o quinto. Depois de mais de um ano parado, quão frustrante foi para você mais uma vez trocar de, de adversário e toda essa polêmica que envolveu o Islã, né? Aceita ou não aceita? Daí você vai dormir achando que o adversário acorda com outro? Quão frustrante foi para você esse cenário inteiro? Ah, cara, eu treinei para lutar cinco rounds, a luta foi adiada duas semanas, aí troca o oponente, aceita um, o cara não aceita... Pô, foi bem, foi bem difícil essas duas semanas aí, muito estresse, muita coisa difícil, mas graças a Deus a gente arrumou o um oponente e saímos com a vitória. Você deixou claro que a sua grande meta é voltar a lutar pelo cinturão. Depois da performance de hoje, o quão distante você acha que você está da sua meta? Cara, eu acho que a luta do cinturão já está marcada, sendo ex-campeão. Eu acho que esse caminho para mim se encurta muito. É... O, o Islã e o Ben vão lutar. Então, eu acho, cara, tudo pode acontecer. Eu, como sempre, eu me mantenho preparado. É, a oportunidade que aparecer, eu vou estar pronto. Só mais duas perguntas, por favor. Você já falou em inglês, gostaria que você respondesse em português. No mundo ideal, qual seria a sua próxima luta e por quê? Ah, cara, eu acho que o, uma luta legal, que faria sentido para mim, seria o retorno do Cono agora, parece que vai voltar em julho, agosto. Seria uma luta legal que me interessava. Eu... Sendo ex-campeão, já ter lutado tanto aí com todo mundo em duas divisões, é, eu preciso de lutas que, que me, me, me animem de ir para a academia e treinar nomes que me deem prazer em treinar, entendeu? Então, esse seria o um nome que me daria isso. Para finalizar, Rafael, você tá, mudou de volta para o Brasil, já vendeu a casa em Los Angeles. É, dez anos atrás, mais ou menos, você mudou para os Estados Unidos. O que você procurava nos Estados Unidos naquela época e o que hoje você procura no Brasil voltando para lá? Eu acho eu, eu vim para cá atrás de treino. É, eu tava sem treino de wrestling, sem treino de, de geral assim, de sparring de tudo. Eu acho que eu consegui isso aqui. Tive uma uma, uma, uma boa temporada. Agora a gente resolveu vender e, e ir para o Brasil. Eu acho que a minha família tá feliz, eu tô feliz, minha esposa tá feliz e eu, o treino lá no Dedé, a gente tem tudo no mesmo lugar, no CT lá do Dedé, na Nova União. Tem jiu-jitsu, wrestling, tudo, tudo. Tudo eu faço lá. Tem meu treinador físico, Paulo Caruso, também. E, e médicos no Brasil, eu acho muito melhor. E tudo, o momento é, é, me levou para o Brasil agora. Hey, Rafael, how are you doing?